Didi, you said that we need an operating system to work on the programs in a computer. Can you tell me more about operating systems? Sure, Rohan. Let's discuss more about operating systems. Operating system is a program that helps us interact with other computer programs and computer is useless without an operating system. The operating system works as an interface between the user and computer. All other programs need operating system to start them, but the operating system starts by itself. The operating system starts the computer automatically when power is turned on. The major functions of the operating system are It controls and coordinates the operation of a computer. It eases the interaction between you and the computer. It controls input and output devices. It controls execution of computer programs. It manages the use of the main memory of computer. It helps you to manage and manipulate files. The operating system can be classified into two types. Character user interface and graphical user interface. Let us discuss one by one about them. Character user interface does not have any icons or images. It works using only text and characters. We can perform tasks on CUI by giving commands in texts such as rename CLS, CD, MD and DIR or directory. An example of CUI is the disk operating system. A graphical user interface has background picture as well as many icons. Examples of GUI are Windows XP, Windows NT, Windows 7 and Ubuntu. The GUI can be further classified into proprietary software and free or open source software. Proprietary software is a computer software type which is licensed under exclusive legal right of the copyright holder. The usage of proprietary software requires licensing with a free attached and can be used only with a registered license. The user is not allowed to modify, share, study and redistribute them. The most common type of proprietary software is Microsoft, Apple in, IBM, operating systems and Unisys. Free or open source software is software which can be downloaded by the user from the internet free of cost. It is provided under an open source license that allows the user to modify, improve and distribute the software freely. However, the changes cannot be copyrighted. The most common type of open source software is Unix, Linux, Aurora UX and Open Solaris. Let's learn about Microsoft Windows, which is one of the most popular operating system. Oh yes, I have heard so much about Microsoft Windows. Microsoft Windows is a series of graphical interface operating systems developed, marketed and sold by Microsoft. Most of the computers that we use come with pre-installed operating system of Microsoft Windows. In case you have a computer system without the Windows operating system, you can buy a licensed software from an authentic seller of the software. An alternative method of obtaining the software could be through online websites such as Microsoft's website. The GUI interface helps you to use programs and keep them organized. Windows are a WYSIWYG type of GUI, which means what you see is what you get. If the operating system in your computer is Windows, the first screen that appears after switching on your computer is the desktop. You can use the Windows desktop to keep all the applications and utilities organized in the computer. The desktop is divided into two areas, main area or the desktop and the taskbar. The narrow strip at the bottom is called the taskbar. The taskbar contains a start button that you can use to access all the programs of the computer. The desktop has a background 
which is called wallpaper. The first screen that you get when you start and log on to your computer is called desktop. The small pictures on the desktop are called desktop icons. These icons represent shortcut for files, programs and folders which could be quickly and easily accessed. The horizontal bar at the very bottom of the screen is called the task bar. The task bar contains many icons and shortcuts. The task bar displays all the running applications and programs as icons. It also helps you access many applications and programs in the computer through these icons. The task bar provides an easy way to switch between multiple programs running on the computer. If a number of applications are running and there is not enough space available on the task bar to keep all the icons, then similar types of icons can also be grouped together. Through the start button, you can access programs and other system utilities. The control panel in the start menu is used to change various hardware and software settings in your computer. The help and support menu item in the start menu is used to get any help needed while working with Windows. With the help of start menu, you can shut down, log off or restart the computer with just a click. You can also change the time and date of the system by these steps. First, click on the date and time present on the right side of the task bar. After this, a clock and a calendar appear. Then, click on the change date and time settings link. After that, click on the change date and time button. Then, set date and time. Click OK to save changes and return to the date and time dialog box. Click OK on the date and time dialog box to save changes and close the dialog box. Desktop and its display settings. Desktop is the display area that you see when you log on to your computer. The picture behind the icons is called wallpaper or the desktop background. When you keep the computer idle for some time, an animation of pictures or text appears on the screen. This is called a screen saver. Changing desktop background. You can change your computer's wallpaper or desktop background with images and pictures of your choice. Steps to change the desktop background are First, right click on the empty space on the desktop. After that, click on the Personalize option from the menu. Then, click on the Desktop Background link. After that, choose a picture and set it as your desktop background. At last, click on the Save Changes button to save the changes. Setting a Screen Saver If you wish to change the screen saver, use these steps. First, right-click on the empty space on the desktop. After that, click on the Personalize option. Then, click on the Screen Saver link. And then, click on the Screen Saver drop-down menu and select a Screen Saver from the list. After that, set the time for the Screen Saver to start by selecting the number of minutes from Wait combo box. After that, click on the Preview button to preview the Screen Saver. Then, click on the Apply button to apply the screen saver. At the end, click on the OK button to save the changes. Your new screen saver will be saved. Now, Rohan, keep this in mind. In a computer, any self-contained piece of information that is available to the operating system and individual programs is called a file. A file can be a document, an image, music or a movie. To keep several files at one place, you create a folder. You can create a file or folder in any of the drives in the computer. You can create a file or folder on the desktop too. After creating a file or folder, you can either rename, copy, paste or even delete it if you do not require it. How do we create a new folder in the drive? Simple. Just follow these steps. 
First, click on the Start button to pop the Start menu. Then, click on the Computer to display the Computer Window or Windows Explorer. Then, click on the D Drive icon to view the content in D Drive. Then, click on the New Folder in the menu bar to create a new folder. You can give a name to the new folder and press Enter. You can also create a folder within a folder which is called as a subfolder. Select and open the folder. Right click on the empty space in the folder and select New first and then Folder from the pop up menu. A new folder will be created. How to open a file or folder? To open a new file or folder, follow these steps. First, click on the Start button to pop the Start menu. After that, click on the Computer to display the Computer window or Windows Explorer. Then, click on the D Drive icon to view the content in D Drive. Double click on the folder that you wish to open. Within the folder, double click on the file or subfolder if you wish to open them. How to save or rename a file or folder? When you create a folder or a subfolder or file in D Drive, it is saved automatically as new folder or new text document. To rename the file or folder, right click on the file or folder. In the new pop-up, click on Rename. Then, type a new name and click Enter. The file or folder will be renamed. Using Accessories In the Windows operating system, there are some important accessories that come very handy. Let's learn about some of the accessories. To access these accessories in a computer, you need to follow these steps. First, click on the Start button on the taskbar. Then, point the mouse to All Programs. After that, click on Accessories. Various accessories are listed here. Click on an accessory to access it. Paint is used to create, edit and view pictures. You can use paint to create drawings on a blank drawing area or in existing pictures. You can copy and paste a paint picture to any other document. How do we use paint? To run paint, first click on the start button. Then point the mouse to all programs. Then click on accessories and select paint. The paint window appears. You can see that the paint window is divided into four major areas. Paint button. Quick Access Toolbar, Drawing Area and Ribbon. With the Paint button, you can perform various actions. The various options in the Paint button are Open, New, Save and Print. The Quick Access Toolbar helps you quickly access frequently used tools such as Save, Redo and Undo. Ribbon a ribbon contains two tabs, Home and View. The Home tab provides tools that help in creating and editing images. It provides options like Clipboard, Image, Tools, Brushes, Shapes and Colors. The Clipboard consists of three options, Cut, Copy and Paste. By using these options, you can cut, copy or paste a selected object in paint. These options help you use one object many times in a picture. The image section help you in selecting and editing objects that needs to be selected, cropped, resized or rotated. The tools section provides various tools that you can use to draw and edit a picture. These tools are Pencil, Fill with Color, Text, Eraser, Color Picker and Magnifier. The brushes have a drop-down menu which helps you choose different kinds of brushes to draw a picture. The Shapes option provides various shapes that you can use in your picture. The Colors option provides a variety of colors to choose from 
while drawing a picture. Didi, you have also said that unlike Microsoft Windows, there are also free operating systems available. Do you know more about them? Yes, Rohan. Linux is one of the most popular free or open source operating systems. The software is free for everybody and can be downloaded from internet. Let's take a look at it. Linux is one of the most popular versions of Unix operating system developed by Linus Torvalds. Linux is very similar to other operating systems like Microsoft Windows. The unique part of Linux is that it is very dynamic. The users are free to develop, modify or expand the software. Linux can be obtained in two different ways. Free download and using distribution. Linux is successfully being used by several millions of users worldwide. All the necessary components of Linux can be downloaded free of charge from the internet. An alternative way is to use a distribution which is offered by various companies and includes a wide variety of applications and installation programs that simplify the installation of Linux. One of the most popular Linux distributions is called Ubuntu, which is being distributed by a company called Canonical. Let's learn about Ubuntu. Ubuntu is an open source software platform that runs everywhere from the smartphone, the tablet and computer. Ubuntu has a graphical user interface or GUI making it similar to other popular operating systems like Windows or Android. Ubuntu's version 12.10 uses Unity as the default desktop environment. The Unity desktop consists of the desktop background and two bars called menu bar and launcher. The menu bar is a horizontal bar located at the top of the desktop. The launcher is a vertical bar located at the far left. The menu bar encompasses common functions used in Ubuntu 12.10. The icons on the far right of the menu bar are called the indicator area. The keyboard indicator allows you to select the keyboard layout and change the keyboard preferences. The messaging indicator incorporates all social applications which include the instant messenger client, the email client, microblogging applications and other similar applications. The network indicator allows you to manage network connections and connect easily to a wired or wireless network. The sound indicator provides an easy way to adjust the sound volume as well as access your music player and sound settings. The clock displays the current time and provides an easy way to access calendar, time and date settings. The user menu allows you to switch between different users and access online and user accounts. The session indicator provides an easy way to access system settings, software updates, printers and session options for locking the device, logging out of a session, restarting the computer or shutting down completely. The application menu is a system where different actions such as edit, view, etc. can be performed in an application. Unlike other GUI environments, the application menu in Unity is located in the left area of the menu bar. To view a specific application, you can move the mouse to the application icon on the desktop's menu bar using the pointer. This will enable the application to superimpose itself in the desktop's menu bar so that the application could be seen and used by you. Once the mouse is moved away from the menu bar, the desktop reappears. 
This feature of Unity, which shows the application's menu only when needed, is beneficial for netbook and laptop users as it provides more free workspace. The vertical bar of icons on the left side of the screen is called the Launcher. It offers easy access to applications by placing active icons on the Launcher while it is being run. The first icon at the top of the Launcher is the Dash, a key innovation and core element of Unity. To run an application from the Launcher or make an already running application to appear, click on the application's icon. The application in the foreground is indicated by a single white triangle on the right side of its icon. To add an application, run the application by right-clicking on the application's icon on the launcher and select Lock to Launcher. To remove an application from the launcher, right-click on the application's icon then select Unlock from Launcher. Dash is a tool to help you locate and access applications and files on the computer quickly. To explore Dash, click on the topmost icon on the launcher. The icon has the Ubuntu logo on it. After selecting the Dash icon, another window will appear with a search bar on the top as well as collection of recently used applications, files and downloads. Dash allows you to search for information, both locally as well as remotely. The two main features of Dash are finding files or folder and finding applications. Workspaces allow you to group applications together and by doing so, help to reduce clutter and improve desktop navigation. Ubuntu has four workspaces by default. To switch between workspaces, click on the workspace switcher located on the launcher. This function allows you to navigate through the workspaces and choose the requisite one. Closing, maximizing, restoring and minimizing windows. The minimize button removes the window from the visible screen and places it in the launcher. The Maximize button makes the application window fill the entire screen. To close a window, click on the cross button in the upper left corner of the window. To move a window around the workspace, place the mouse pointer over the window's title bar. Then click and drag the window while continuing to hold down the left mouse button. To resize a window, Place the pointer on an edge or corner of the window so that the pointer turns into a larger two-sided arrow known as the resize icon. Click and drag to resize the window. There are two ways to locate files on the computer. Search for a file or access it directly from the folder in which it is placed via dash in the launcher or Use the Files and Folders tool to access commonly used folders as well as most recently accessed files. The Go menu holds a list of commonly used folders. To access Go, move your mouse over the top bar and select Go. Then, browse the files on your computer by clicking Computer in this menu. If you set up a home network, you will find a menu item to access shared files or folders. The home folder is used to store personal files. It matches the user's login name. It contains a number of folders inside, which are created automatically during the installation process. It includes desktop, downloads, music, documents, pictures, public, templates and videos. Nautilus File Manager Just as Windows has Windows Explorer to browse files and folders, Ubuntu uses the Nautilus File Manager by default to browse files and folders. Didi, where is the Nautilus File Manager? 
Just double click on a folder on the desktop, the Nautilus file manager window opens. The default window contains the following features. Menu bar, title bar, toolbar, left pane and central pane. These are the steps to navigate Nautilus. To navigate between folders, use the bookmarks in the left pane of the Nautilus file manager. To go back, click on the name of a folder in the path bar. Double clicking on a visible folder will help you to navigate to it. To open a file with Nautilus, either double click on its icon or right click the icon and select one of the open with options. To create a new folder from within Nautilus, first click file and then click create new folder. After that, Name the folder that appears by replacing the default untitled folder with the desired label. It saves the file in Nautilus. The steps to copy files or folder are First, click Edit. Then, copy or right click on the item and select Copy from the pop up menu. You can now paste the copied file wherever you wish to now. You can also open multiple Nautilus windows by these steps. First, select File. Then, click on New Window. This will open a new window, allowing you to drag files or folders between two locations. To open a new tab, first, click File. Then, New Tab. A new row will appear above the space used for browsing your files containing two tabs. To open a second pane, click View, Extra Pane. This helps you to see two locations at once on the screen without having to switch between tabs or windows. You can search for files and folders using the Nautilus or Dash. In Nautilus, click Go, Search for files or press Ctrl plus F and then type what you want to find. In Dash, simply type your search terms in the search bar at the top of the Dash. The most popular suite in Ubuntu, which is installed by default, is the Liber Office. It provides the same functionality as Microsoft Word, Excel and PowerPoint Except that LibreOffice is free open source software. All these applications can be accessed through the launcher. It includes the following components which are found in other operating systems by different names. Writer, Word Processor. Calc, Spreadsheet. Impress, Presentation Manager. Draw, Drawing Program. Base, Database Math Equation Editor Wasn't learning about open source operating systems interesting? Let's now take part in this activity. Didi, do mobile phones and tablets also have operating system like computers? Yes, Rohan. Nowadays, mobile phones or tablets combines the features of a personal computer's operating system with other features including touchscreen, cellular, Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, GPS mobile navigation, camera, video camera, speech recognition, voice recorder, music player and other features. Most mobile phone operating systems are Android, Windows or Symbian. Oh, I want to know so much more about mobile phones. Can you teach me? Yes, of course. Let's start with how to use different features in a mobile phone. First, let's learn how to make a call from a mobile phone. To make a call, type in the phone number on the keypad. In case you have a smartphone, find the phone icon on the home screen and tap on it. You will see a number pad on the screen. Type the digits that you wish to dial. After that, press the green button or the answer key on the left. In case of a smartphone, tap on the green button. 
the screen will show that the number is dialing or connecting. You can then make the call. To end the call, press or tap the red button. The call will end. Now, let's learn how to answer or decline a call. When your phone rings, press the green button to answer your phone. In case of a smartphone, swipe from left to right to answer the call. To decline a call, press the red button on the right. In case of a smartphone, swipe from right to left to decline the call. How can we call the last dialed number? Easy! First press the green button on left on the home screen. It will display a list of recently dialed numbers. In the case of a smartphone, tap on the phone icon. It will show all calls which are dialed, received and missed. After that, select the number and then press the green button again. Simply tap on the number in a smartphone. It will start dialing the number. This is how you can view call history. First, press menu in standby mode. Tap on the phone icon in a smartphone. Then, select call register or call history or call log. After that, it will show three tabs, namely received calls, dialed calls and missed calls. Then, click on the tab you wish to see. It will show you a list of calls along with the date and time of the call. In a smartphone, all calls can be seen in one single list. A green arrow denotes received calls. A blue arrow denotes dialed calls and a red arrow denotes missed calls. You may call the phone number, save the number in contact book or send a message to the number. Here are the steps to adjust the volume in a mobile phone. First, press the menu button from the main screen on phone. Then, click on settings from the options menu. After that, Select the Sounds or Audio option from the Settings menu. After that, locate the Volume option in the Sounds menu. The volume controls are found under Ringer or Ringtone. At the end, click on the Speaker option and press up or down on the keypad to adjust the volume to the desired level. On your smartphone, there is a volume control button on the outside. Simply press it on either side to increase or decrease the volume level. I want to include the phone number and name of my friend Amit. How can I do that? This is how you can add new contacts. When the phone is in standby mode, press menu. In a smartphone, tap the phone icon. Then, under Menu, go to the phone book of your cell phone. It is depicted on the home screen by a picture of a phone or the words Phone, Phone Book or Contacts. Now, select Add New Contact from the available options. First, enter the phone number for the contact you wish to add, including the area code, in the form that appears on screen. In a smartphone, type the digits in the number pad. Tap on Add to Contacts and then Create New Contact. And then enter your friend's first and last name in the appropriate area in the form. Then make sure to press or tap Save or Add to Contacts button to save the information. The new contact will be added to your mobile phone. To edit contact details of already stored numbers, select the name of the contact. Press or tap Edit. Type in the correct information and press or tap 
save. Now I will show you how to send a message. In standby mode, press menu. Then choose messaging. In a smartphone, find the messaging icon on home screen. Tap on the icon. You will see a list of messages. Select create message or writing text. In a smartphone, tap on write message icon. Write your message in the text box. To add a picture or an attachment, select options and then insert object. Scroll down to the desired picture or object, press view and then insert. Type the recipient's phone number in the designated area or click phone book if you wish to send the message to a saved contact. Select the contact and click OK. In a smartphone, type the first few letters of the recipient's name in the To column. You will see a list of names from your contact book. Tap on the required name. Click or tap Send to send your text message. The message will be sent to the recipient. Press or tap End or Cancel to return to the main screen. This is how you can read a received message. When you receive a message, you will see envelope icon on top of the home screen. You will also see a box with one message received on the screen. Then press show to view the new message. Read the message. Didi, can we use internet through our mobile phone too? Of course, you can Rohan. That's just great. What do we need to access the internet from the mobile phone? To access the internet on your mobile phone, you need a mobile phone that supports internet access. A mobile phone service that supports data transmission such as 2G, 3G and Wi-Fi. An account from your mobile service provider with data settings for accessing internet on your phone. Many phones come preloaded with data account settings. If yours does not, you should talk to the service provider's customer care. This is how you can set up mobile internet on a smartphone. First, navigate to the settings menu of your smartphone. This can be done via the settings icon in the apps menu on any smartphone device and sometime via the notifications bar. In the settings menu, you need to find the wireless and networks settings. On most devices, click the More or More Settings button, whichever is available. Once you have found the wireless and network settings, you can connect via Wi-Fi or mobile network for internet. To connect to Wi-Fi, follow these steps. First, turn on your Wi-Fi options via Either clicking the Wi-Fi button in the Notifications menu or through Settings option. Then, you will be shown a list of available internet networks. If you have already saved a Wi-Fi network, then it will automatically connect. Otherwise, you may have to select the Wi-Fi network that you want to connect to. If password is required, Enter the password and click Connect. Use an internet browser to access the internet. To connect to mobile network for internet, first go to the More Settings option in Wireless and Networks option. Then click on the Mobile Networks button. There you will have to check the Mobile Data checkbox. Now Use the internet browser to access the internet. 
In keypad based phones, one can easily use internet services as well. First, select menu and then internet. Then, open the home page, either select home or in the home screen, press and hold zero. After that, to enter a web address, select go to address, then enter the address and then select OK. To search the web, if you search for the first time, select a search provider, then select search and enter the search terms and select search. I have a radio in my mobile phone. How can I listen to it? Follow these steps to listen to the radio. First, in the standby mode, press menu. Then, go to media and then to radio. In case of a smartphone, tap on the radio icon in the menu. Next, connect your phone to a compatible headset. It acts as an antenna. After that, search for the radio channel you wish to listen to by choosing automatic or manual tuning. Save the channels by pressing or tapping save channel under options. Then adjust the volume, scroll up or down. To turn the radio off, press or tap options and then switch off. Let me also show you how to play a song on the mobile phone. First, select menu on the standby mode. Then, open your phone's multimedia menu to display available applications on your mobile device. The music application might show as media or gallery. Then, select music or sound. Browse the songs available within your media player application and select one to play it on your device. To pause or resume playing, press or tap the play or pause key. The same button acts as play and pause. To exit the music player, press the red button on right. In case of a smartphone, Tap on the pause icon. You will need a memory card to store music on your phone. Now, here are the steps on how to take a photo from the mobile phone. From the standby mode, press menu. Next, choose media and then camera. In your smartphone, find and tap on the camera icon. Then, use the display on screen as a viewfinder. Scroll up and down to zoom in and zoom out. In a smartphone, use your fingers to pinch in and pinch out the size of the display. Take the picture by pressing select or OK button. In a smartphone, you need to tap on the camera icon to capture the picture. Press save to save the picture on your device. It is saved automatically in the album or gallery in a smartphone. Here are the steps to record a video. Select menu and then photo and then go to video camera. In case of a smartphone, Tap on camera icon. Next, use the display on screen as a viewfinder. Scroll up and down to zoom in and zoom out. In a smartphone, use your fingers to pinch in and pinch out the size of the display. To start recording the video, select record. In case of a smartphone, you need to tap on the small red icon located on the screen. To stop recording, press stop. In a smartphone, tap on the red icon again. The video is saved automatically in album, gallery, 
in a smartphone. Mobile phones or smartphones can also be helpful for doing quick calculations. How is that possible? Through calculator. These are the steps to use the calculator. First, press menu in standby mode. Next, select organizer and then calculator. In a smartphone, find the calculator icon in the menu and tap on it. Type in a number using the number pad on your phone. Choose add, subtract, multiply or divide function. Type in the second number. Press or tap the equals button to get the result. Thank you Didi for letting me know so much more about mobile phones. I am also very interested in tablets. Do you know about them? Yes, of course Rohan. Let's discuss more about tablets. Tablets are smaller, lighter and more manageable variants of computers. They are wireless and portable devices that make use of touch as input to access or process information. Tablets include operating systems that provide a GUI and can run applications. The most popular operating systems of tablets are Android, Windows or iOS. Tablets can be broadly classified into two types with call facility and without call facility. A tablet with call facility would include a SIM card slot. You will need a SIM card and a connection to a mobile network to make and receive calls and send and receive text messages. A tablet without call facility will not have a SIM card slot though all the other features would be similar to a tablet with call facility. You would still be able to make calls through internet. Let's discuss about some of the features of a tablet. Most tablets can be used for the following purposes. Making and receiving phone calls. Sending and receiving messages. Listening to music. Taking a picture or video. Watching videos. Reading ebooks. Accessing the internet. Sending and receiving emails. Sharing music, images and videos with others. These are the steps by which you can listen to music in a tablet. First, go to application menu. Then, tap on music to enter the music playback interface. Now, you can classify the music file list by recent, albums, artists, songs, playlists or yawners by selecting the appropriate option. Next, tap the song for one second. The option menu will pop up. Next, you can select one of the options from play, add to playlist, shop, for artist, delete or search. Tap play to enter the playback interface and then tap on the song to make it play. This is how you can take a photo with the tablet. First, in the application menu, tap the camera icon to enter the camera interface. Next, select photo mode by tapping the preferred icon in photo mode. Point the camera towards the subject. To activate autofocus, touch and hold a spot on the screen. Lift your finger to take the photo. These are the steps to record a video. First, in the application menu, tap the camera icon to enter the camera interface. Next, select video mode by tapping the preferred icon in photo mode. Now, point the camera towards the subject. Now, tap to start recording. Tap to stop recording. These are the steps to delete a photo or recorded video. Browse to the photo or video that you want to delete. Tap the screen to make appear the trash can icon. Tap on it to delete the photo or video. This is how you can view photos and videos. First, 
find and tap album. Next, tap a photo or video to view it. Flick left to view the next photo or video or flick right to view the previous photo or video. To play a video, follow these steps. Open the pictures or album tab from the menu. Now, use grid view or list view. Locate the video that you want to open. Tap the video that you want to play. If the playback controls are not displayed, tap the screen to display them. To pause a video, follow these steps. When a video is playing, tap the screen to display the controls. After that, tap the play or pause icon to pause or restart the video. These are the steps on how to fast forward and rewind a video. When a video is playing, tap the screen to display the controls. After that, drag the progress bar marker left to rewind or right to fast forward. This is how you can read an ebook in the tablet. First, go to the default book reader installed in the tablet. Next, tap on the icon of the book reader. After that, choose the book you wish to read from among the pre-installed books. Tap on the books icon to start reading. I have heard that you can also send and receive emails with the tablet. Yes, Rohan, the tablet can be used to send and receive emails from almost any POP or IMAP email address by using the specific application installed in the tablet. Let me show you the steps used to write an email in a tablet. In the menu, click on any internet browser icon. A window will appear with a horizontal bar on the top. Type in the URL of the email service provider you wish to visit. For example, www.gmail.com Now, type in your username and password in the space provided. Tap Sign In. Here on this page, find and tap Compose or Write New. In the new window, type the recipient's email ID in To field. Type the subject in the Subject field. On the blank space in the center, type your message. Tap on Send. Your email is sent. Here are the steps on how to read a received email. First, when you receive an email, an icon of an envelope appears on the top of the screen. Drag down the screen to view the icon. Alternatively, go to the email client's icon in the menu. Now, tap on the icon. Your mail inbox will open on the screen. Tap on the email and read it. How do we locate a file in the tablet? There are two ways to search for a file or folder on your tablet. You can either use File Manager installed on your tablet or use the online search engine which is located on the home screen by using the file manager. On the home screen, find the file manager or file browser app. Tap on it. It shows my files on top. From the list, locate the folder or file that you wish to open. Tap on it to open it. By using the online search engine. On the home screen, Locate the search icon which looks like a magnifying glass. Tap on it. A new window will appear. You will see a horizontal tab with search written in it. Type in the keywords of the information that you wish to locate. Online search results will be shown on the screen. Tap on the requisite one to open it. How can we send a message from a tablet? Just follow these steps to send a message from a tablet. On the home screen, find the messaging icon, 
or tap on the menu icon to view all the applications on the phone to locate the messaging icon. Tap on the messaging icon. You will see a list of received messages. Find the Write New icon on the screen, denoted by either an envelope and plus symbol or a pencil and plus symbol. Tap on it. Type the first few letters of the recipient's name in the To column. You will see a list of names from your contact book. Tap on the required name. It will be inserted in the To column. Tap on Write Message and start typing your message. You can attach a file, document, image or music file by tapping on the relevant icon and inserting the desired file. Tap on Send. Your message will be sent. This is how you can read a received message. When you receive a new message, you will be able to see a messaging icon on the top of the screen. Alternatively, you will see a number written on the messaging icon on the home screen denoting the number of new messages received. Tap on it. It will open the messaging window with a list of received messages. Tap on the message you wish to read. How do we access the internet from a tablet? There are two ways to access the internet from a tablet, just like in a mobile phone. First, by connecting through Wi-Fi, these are the steps to connect the tablet through Wi-Fi. First, go to the settings menu of your tablet. The configuration of Wi-Fi setting is given in figure. You will be shown a list of available internet networks. You have to select the Wi-Fi network that you want to connect to. If password is required, enter the password and click Connect. Use the internet browser to access the internet. You can also connect the tablet through mobile network. This is how you can do it. First, ensure that you have a mobile network SIM card in your tablet. Then, to connect to the internet via your tablet network, you can both pull down the notifications bar and select mobile data option. Or, you can go to the More Settings option in Wireless and Networks option. Then, click on the Mobile Networks button. There, you will have to check the Mobile Data checkbox. Once it has been clicked, your tablet will start receiving mobile internet. Use an internet browser to access the internet. Didi, you said that some tablets can also work as phones. How can we do that? You need to insert a valid GSM SIM card into the SIM card slot while the device is powered off. Let me show you how you can make a call from a tablet. On the home screen, tap the receiver icon. Press the digits of the phone number you wish to dial. Tap the receiver icon. After that, you can start talking once it connects. If you wish to make a call from the phone book or contact list, you need to follow these steps. First, go to phone book or the contact list on your tablet. Then, search the name you wish to contact. After that, tap on the contact name. Then, tap on the contact number. And then, start talking once it connects. Let me show you some other features in a tablet. Oh, really? Rohan, a tablet is stored with many languages. You can choose the language you wish the tablet to display. Let's learn how to set the language in a tablet. First, from the application menu, tap on Settings and select Language and Input from the list. Then, tap on Language and you can see a list of compatible languages. After that, tap on the language that you want and it will be set instantly. In the same area, you can also set the language of the keyboard that you would like to use when you need to input language on screen. 
To set date and time, follow these steps. From Application menu, tap on Settings and select Date and Time from the list. Tick on Automatic and the date and time will be set automatically by using network provided values or uncheck automatic to set the date and time manually. Didi, can you teach me how to install applications in a tablet? Yes, of course. Applications or apps are one of the key features of tablet which can really enhance the way you access various services. These are the steps to get the new apps on your tablet. First, go to menu option on your tablet. And then, in menu, tap on Play Store option. Click on one of the displayed options. If the app is free, you can simply tap the Install button and your phone will download and install the app automatically. If the app has a price, you will instead see a Buy button. Tapping this will pop a confirmation box asking if you want to buy the app. To confirm, press OK. You will then have to enter your payment details with credit or debit card information. Follow the on-screen instructions to install the application. That's all for now, Rohan. Wasn't that interesting learning about mobile phones and tablets? Yes, that sure was, Didi. Thank you so much. Now I know so much about mobile phones and tablets because of you. That's not at all a problem. Now, let's take a look at this interesting activity too.